Well, good morning, everyone. How are you today? Pretty good here. I'm cruising around in the Tacoma this morning, and I thought I'd do a little bit of a lift update. You know, I get questions frequently on the channel about what's my setup, what am I running, how do I like it, stuff like that. So I figured uh, I'd get on here. It's been a while. I've had the lift on for, I don't know, a couple, three, four months, something like that, and probably pushing the thousand mile mark somewhere around there. Of course, I've had it in, I've had it retorqued, all that good stuff. You're supposed to do that at 500 miles. Uh, no issues, and a big shout out to Texas Tire down here in the RGV. Um, they got me right in. I was in and out of there in probably 10 minutes. Um, awesome, love it. But anyway, like I say, I thought I'd get on here and, uh, and do a little bit of a Tacoma lift update, if you will. Uh, how this is doing. Uh, if you watch the channel, then you know I'm on my, oh, I don't know, second lift, I guess, uh, that I've had on this truck. And I switched because I had some bouncy problems. And I think it was more related to this trim level that I have. And it's the TRD off-road. Um, because I had my original lift on the Sport, and that was a 2018. And I didn't have any issues like that. I didn't have any weird bounciness. I mean, the ride was stiffer because you're gonna get that with a lift. Um, more so probably with the tire setup that you have. And that's really why I think I had issue um, with that original lift. And it was just a 3-2 block and spacer ready lift. Uh, that's why I think I had trouble with that lift on this truck uh, to begin with. So. I replaced it with what I like to refer to as a hybrid lift. And what do I mean by that? Well, I suppose technically you could still say it's a block and spacer lift. I mean, I still have the blocks in the back, uh, two inch blocks, that were from the original lift because I did have that lift on this truck. So we still have two inch uh, blocks in the back no leaf spring work or anything like that, but I did replace the shocks with some Bill Steins, uh, and I went with the 5100s in the back. Awesome shocks, work out great. They look good back there if you're ever nosing around, uh, but I'm very happy with those. In the front is where the, the real change was, I guess. Um, it is a ready lift, uh, but again, I call it a hybrid lift, and I call it that because it's an integrated spacer uh, coil and shock lift. Now, what I mean by that is you've got your coils and inside the coils is the spacer for the front. And then you have the Bill Stein 6112s inside the coils. And it all comes, well, the coil part anyway, but it all comes as one piece, if you will, um, or one replacement uh, for the lift. Now, what that gave me was about uh, three and a half inches in the front and about three inches or so in the rear. So the truck has a little bit of a, a rake in the front, if you will. Um, it's just, it sits about a half an inch higher. And it is noticeable, you can see it. Um, but I'm thinking that over time, and I need to measure it again, I haven't recently, uh, to see if we've uh, come down at all. Because I think after it settles a bit in the front, could settle in the back too though, but I think after a while and it settles in the front, uh, it will drop a little bit. And I also have plans eventually uh, to change the bumper in the front to go to uh, probably a heavier bumper. It'll probably be aluminum, uh, but nonetheless, it's still gonna add some weight to the front end. And that's gonna pull that front end down a little bit, I think. So, uh, might have actually been the uh, perfect scenario for me, given that I am looking to uh, go ahead and put something heavier on the front. Now, as far as the ride, it did get rid of that bouncy feel or whatever that I had. I shouldn't say feel, it did bounce. I mean, you could actually um, pick it up by eye in the truck. You could actually see it. Uh, it did get rid of that, that's gone. Um, it is a firmer ride, I must say. I think it's firmer uh, than what I had with just the block and spacer lift. 
uh, but that would be just spacers in the front with the OEM coils and shocks. So I am getting a firmer ride. I do take the bumps, you know, in the road a little bit uh, harder, I guess, than before. It's not a bad thing. It's just that if you're looking for something that's uh, OEM, I guess, and I don't think you're ever going to have anything OEM if you just change the tires to something bigger. Uh, because you're putting something that's going to give you a firmer ride on the truck. So for what that's worth. Um, am I happy with it? Yeah, I am very happy with it. You know, no longer do I get in the truck and and, uh, and I'm concerned about the lift. I'm aware of it, you know. And it, again, I don't want you to think it's just the lift. It's not just the lift. You know, when you lift the truck and change the wheels and tires, it's the whole package, right? That's going to impact your ride and the way everything feels. Uh, bigger, heavier tires, of course, are going to make a difference. And when you add the lift to it, eh, it's enough that you're going to notice a change and it's not going to be OEM. So always be aware of that, you know, if you're looking to put a lift on a truck. Um, would I do it again? Would I go back to OEM? Uh, no, no way. You know, for me, I think the Dakota, uh, the Dakota, the Dakota, I'm thinking. Dakota and Tacoma, I guess. I think the Tacoma should come lifted from the factory. I think it's just such an awesome look on the truck. And some would say that it does. I mean, it has a little bit of a, a height increase, I guess, over what, uh, you know, some of the other trucks out there might have. Uh-oh, we're going to head on with a fire truck here. There we go. Oh, he's turning. Okay. Okay. That might not have been one of my brightest moments. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I would definitely do it again. I love the look of the Tacoma with the lift on it. I really love the look of the Tacoma with bigger wheels and tires. I think uh, as far as the tire size, you know, kind of got to go with what you're, uh, what you're comfortable with. Um, but for wheels, I wouldn't go any bigger than 17 inch. You know, I had 20 inch on my last truck. And the problem with that is, is you reduce the wheel or the tire wall so much that you get a really bad, poor quality ride, in my opinion, because you just don't have the, the, the rubber, the tire wall, if you will, to absorb all the bumps and things in the road. It looks good. I think it's a, an awesome look, but I just think you give up too much uh, comfort and daily livability when you do something like that. So definitely wouldn't go bigger than 17, maybe 18, uh, but I definitely wouldn't recommend 20s on the truck like what I had before. Um, I'd just stay away from them. So yeah, I'm very happy. Money-wise, the whole thing, including installation, um, is right about 1600, 1650, something like that, if I recall. Um, not as cheap as a uh, just a regular block and spacer lift, which you should be able to be to get done, depending on your area, um, for no more than uh, six to eight hundred bucks. So it's about double the price, and I think that's probably due to uh, the shocks, the struts, um, the Bilsteins uh, cost more money, and of course you're buying the coil which you weren't before, and then the extra labor to to install that. So. That's what I think. Uh, pretty happy with it. I definitely would do it again, and uh, and I do recommend it. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching. Real quick, if you haven't before and you're interested, check out my other channel. It is Rob Motive JT, all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Don't forget to click that notification bell on the way out so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.